In this video, I will answer one of your questions about how to improve your squat by activating your glutes. So why strengthen your glutes? Strong glutes help you squat deeper because they improve hip mobility. They also protect your lower back and stabilize your knees. While there are hundreds of glute activation exercises, in this video I will share only the few that have been the most effective in my practice. First exercise is fire hydrant hip circles. Start on your hands and knees, placing your hands under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. Without tilting your pelvis, lift your left knee out to the side as high as it will go. Then move it to the back, also keeping it as high as it will go. Then lower it down. Remember that in this exercise you want to avoid tilting your pelvis to the side. And now reverse the direction. So now you will go back, then to the side, and then down. The entire time keep your pelvis as flat and horizontal as possible. The most common mistake when doing this exercise is arching the back or tilting the pelvis to get the range of motion. Try to avoid that because this makes the exercise redundant. The goal of the fire hydrant is to disassociate your pelvis from your hips. Now change sides and begin moving your right knee to the side, to the back and down without shifting your pelvis. In the beginning, you might find that you are struggling to maintain a neutral pelvis position or struggling to make large enough circles with your knee. That is completely fine. The most common cause is excessive sitting, which creates a pathologically codependent relationship between the hips and the pelvis and also tightens the hips. Now reverse the direction and continue focusing on keeping your pelvis as stable as possible while moving your knee in as large a circle as possible. When performed correctly and consistently, this exercise helps alleviate chronic lower back and hip pain. Now finish your last rep and grab your kettlebell. Our next exercise is kettlebell swing. It goes without saying that at the top of the swing we squeeze our glutes hard. However, what is not as widely known is that at the bottom of the swing we need to a bend our knees and b keep our knees pushed out rather than allowing them to collapse inwards. This engages our gluteus medius, the muscle that stabilizes the knee. For the next exercise, 90-90 external rotations, you need to be seated on the ground with your knees bent at 90 degrees and a 90 degree angle between your upper thighs. Press your externally rotated knee down and without changing the position of your torso, lift your internally rotated knee up. Avoid twisting or bending your torso and avoid lifting your non-working knee. Once you have completed 10 raises, lift the knee up, hold it at the top and pulse it for 20 reps. This exercise might feel a little frustrating to some people because the knee doesn't come up very high. That is not a problem. This is an assistance exercise and the job of an assistant exercise is to improve your main lift. So, you are not supposed to be the champion or a master of assistance exercises. You just meant to do them however well you can and watch them improve your main lifts. Now, change sides and repeat on the other leg. You might notice that one of your sides is tighter than the other. In relation to the squat, this exercise helps improve the external rotation of your hip, which allows you to squat deeper and keep your knees pushed out wide rather than letting them collapse inwards. Now lift the knee and pulse it at the top. Remember 
to keep your torso straight and vertical and your opposite knee pressed into the ground. If you perform this exercise correctly, you will experience mild discomfort in the hip area. This discomfort comes from the deep hip muscles being exercised and it's okay as long as you don't push past the point of pain. For our next exercise you will require a sturdy kettlebell and you will be lying on the ground. The fourth exercise is called single leg hip thrust with knee hold and it works on your gluteus maximus which is the largest muscle of the gluteus group. You will perform single leg hip thrust but you will take a hold of the opposite knee. This is done in order to prevent you arching your back and using your lower back to help raise your hips. By doing this you put all the work on your glutes. This makes the exercise more challenging. The best thing you can do when performing any hip thrust exercise is to pause at the top for at least 3 seconds. The pause at the top of each rep makes the difference between a hip thrust that is effective and a hip thrust that is a waste of time. And now change sides and repeat on the other leg. Elevating your bottom foot on a kettlebell or another sturdy object actually makes this movement feel a little bit easier than if your foot was flat on the ground. As long as you maintain the knee hold and the 3 second pause, you can play around with keeping your foot on the ground, on a kettlebell or even placing it on a low bench. The next exercise is not very well known, however, both me and my clients swear by it for creating a strong gluteus medius and healthy knees. Lie on your side with your elbow under your shoulder and your knees bent at 90 degrees. Leaving your bottom knee on the ground, raise your hips and the top leg up. Pause for one second, then return briefly into the starting position. As you get stronger, you can extend the pause at the top to two or three seconds. Remember that the value of this exercise is not in the quantity but the quality of the reps. Change sides and repeat on the other leg. If you're wondering which leg you're actually training, you're training both at the same time but just in different ways. If and when you're able to complete three sets of 15 reps with three second pause at the top, you will not need to progress this exercise any farther but keep using it as glute activation if you still need it. Remember, this is an assistance exercise and your focus should always be on your core lifts. Next exercise is single leg deadlift. There are two main variations of single leg deadlift. One is single leg Romanian deadlift where you don't bend your knee much. Second one, the one we're using here, is single leg deadlift where your knee actually bends quite a bit, the same as what it does during a regular deadlift. Keeping your back straight, your shoulders packed and your hips square, aim to put the kettlebell down on the ground next to the inside of your standing foot. Change sides and repeat on the other leg. Bending your bottom knee rather than keeping it relatively straight as in the Romanian deadlift challenges your gluteus medius which is the muscle that is responsible for the stabilization of the knee during the squat. When performing this exercise make sure that your foot is pointing straight forward, your knee is in line with your middle toes and you're pushing your heel into the ground. Our last exercise is passive to active prying goblet squat. Grab a kettlebell in a goblet rack, squat down and jam your elbows into the knees pushing the knees apart. Alternate between pulling your elbows in under the kettlebell 
and pushing them out into the knees. Make an effort to keep your knees as wide as they were when your elbows were pushing them apart. You will accomplish that by engaging your gluteus medius muscle, that is the muscle on the side of your butt. In the beginning, many people don't feel the gluteus medius engage and disengage when you change the position of your elbows. However, if you continue performing the exercises that I outlined in this video, you will start noticing how your gluteus medius switches on to keep your knees apart in the bottom of the squat. In this video, I shared the exercises to activate and strengthen your glutes to improve your squat. If this video was useful, please like, share and subscribe. See you next time.